Hi my dear friends, welcome to Venus Engitech. In the last class we discussed Euclid's division lemma, Euclid's division algorithm and its problems, right? And given you two homeworks. First we solve the first two homeworks and then we go to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So let's start the class. See, the question was show that 1 and only 1 out of n, n plus 2 or n plus 4 is divisible by 3 where n is any positive integer. Did you get the solution? Okay, we can do. See, it is given that 1 and only 1 out of n, n plus 2 or n plus 4 is divisible by 3 where n is any positive integer, right? So, we can write let n be any positive integer because it is given that n is any positive integer. So, let n be any positive integer and here we can take the value of b as, what is the value of b? b is equal to 3 because it is given that these 3 are divisible by 3. So, we can take the value of b as 3, right? And uh, according to Euclid's division lemma and algorithm, how we can write? We know the equation a is equal to bq plus r, right? So, here instead of a, it is given that n. So, n is equal to bq plus r for 0 less than or equal to r less than b and here the value r is less than b, right? And here the value of b is 3. So, we should we should have the remainders, what all values? 0, 1 and 2. It should be less than 3, right? So, r can take values 0, 1 and 2. Suppose, and here we know the value of b as 3, right? So, we can write n is equal to 3q plus r, equation number 1. Understood this much? Now, suppose if r, r can take 3 values, 0, 1, and 2, right? So, first case, if r is equal to 0. If r is equal to 0, we must apply this equation to n, n plus 2, and n plus 4. That means, if r is equal to 0, equation 1 becomes n is equal to 3q plus 0, which is equal, implies n is equal to 3q, right? Now, if n becomes n plus 2, this is, suppose, equation A, okay? Now, if n becomes n plus 2, how we can write 3q becomes 3q plus 2, Understood? Because in the LHS we are adding plus 2. Similarly, in the right hand side also we are adding plus 2. Now, if n becomes n plus 4, what is the value? 3q plus 4. Right? Because here the reminder is 0. Understood? If our, our value is 0, then we get the equation n, n plus 2 and n plus 4 becomes n is equal to 3q. Because n is equal to 3q plus r, r we have taken as 0. So, n is equal to 3q and n plus 2 becomes 3q plus 2 and n plus 4 becomes 3q plus 4, okay? And here, see, 3q. 3 into any number means it is divisible by 3, right? 3 into 8, 24, which is divisible by 3. Suppose 3 into 9, 27, it is divisible by 3. So, any number multiplied by 3 implies it is divisible by 3. Right? So, 3q implies it is divisible by 3. Right? But what about the case of 3q plus 2? 3q plus 2. We can check it. Right? 3q plus 2. See, 3q it is obviously divisible by 3. 3 into any number means it is divisible by 3. But when we add 2 to it, for example, q is 1. Okay? 3 into 1 plus 2. 3 plus 2, 5. It is not divisible by 3. Again take 3 into 2 plus 2. 3 into 2 6 plus 2 8 which is not divisible by 3. Likewise we, in, we take any value. If we take any value for q and 2 is added to this 3q it will not be divisible by 3. Okay you can take any example. For example if q is equal to 11. 3 into 11 plus 2. 33 plus 2 35 which is not divisible by 3. So this case is not divisible by 3. Understood? You can take any example so that you will understand that this is not divisible by 3. Okay? Now what about the next one? 3q plus 4. n plus 4 is equal to 3q plus 4. We can check it like this. 
3 into q, if suppose q is 1, 3 into 1 plus 4, 3 plus 4 it is 7, not divisible by 3. Then again q was 2, 3 into 2 plus 4, 6 plus 4, 10, which is not divisible by 3. Then again take q was 3, 3 into 3 plus 4, 6 plus 4, oh, sorry, 3 into 3 it is 9, 9 plus 4 it is 13, not divisible by 3. Again you can take any value, q was 13, 13 into 3, it is 39, 39 plus 4 it is 43 not divisible by 3. So, if you take any number for q, 3q plus 4 will not be divisible by 3. Understood? So, n plus 4 equal to 3q plus 4 is also not divisible by 3. That means, in case of r is equal to 0, only n is equal to 3q is divisible by 3. The other two cases are not divisible by 3. Understood? Now, you can put next value of r, that is r is equal to 1. We have three values, r is equal to 0, 1 and 2 and we have applied r is equal to 0 and found that n is equal to 3q is only divisible by 3. Now, next we take r as 1. So, if r is equal to 1, what will be the value of n, n plus 2 and n plus 4? And we have the equation 1, right? n is equal to 3q plus r and if we put r as 1 in equation 1, what will be the value? n is equal to 3q plus, here r is 1, so 3q plus 1, understood? Now, if n, this is the value of n, and what will be the value of n plus 2? Here LHS, we added plus 2, so RHS also it will be plus 2, that is 3q plus 1 plus 2 is there, right? So what is the value? 3q plus 3, n plus 2 becomes 3q plus 3, 2 plus 1 it is 3, which can be written as 3 as common, q plus 1. Understood? Now, next n plus 2. This is the value of n. n as 3q plus 1 and n plus 2 as 3 times q plus 1. Now, next we take n plus 4. We are adding LHS plus 4. So, what will be, what RHS become? 3q plus 1 plus 4. Right? 3q plus 1 plus 4 which is equal to 3q plus 5. Understood? We got three values. Once again, we are putting R as 1 and checking whether what is the value of n, n plus 2 and n plus 4 in equation 1. And our equation 1 is, one is n is equal to 3q plus R and putting R as 1, what will become the value of n, n as 3q plus 1. n plus 2 becomes 3q plus 1 plus 2. n plus 4 becomes 3q plus 1 plus 4. Understood? So, 3q plus 1 plus 2 can be written as 3q plus 3, which is equal to 3 as common q plus 1, 3 times q plus 1. And n plus 4, it is 3q plus 5, because 4 plus 1, it is 5. Understood? Now, we can check whether these 3 are divisible by 3 or not. First case, 3q plus 1. 3q plus 1. We know that any number multiplied by 3 will obviously be divisible by 3. But when we add 1 to that, is it divisible by 3? Let's check. If q is 1, then 3 into 1 plus 1. What is the answer? 4, which is not divisible by 3. Then if we put q as 2, 3 into 2 plus 1. 6 plus 1, it is 7, not divisible by 3. If we put 3 into 3, q as 3. 3 into 3 plus 1, which is equal to 10, which is again not divisible by 3. So if we put any value of q and adding 1 to that, 3q plus 1 is not divisible by 3. So, what we can write? The first case, it is not divisible by 3, right? What about the second case? See, from this value itself, we can say that it is divisible by 3 because 3 times any number is divisible by 3. We can check it. It is 3 times q plus 1, right? If Suppose q is 1. 3 into 1 plus 1, it is 2. 3 into 2, it is 6. If suppose uh, the value of q is 0, then 3 into 0 plus 1 it is 1. 3 into 1 it is 3. Again divisible by 3. Suppose the value of q was 5. Then 3 into 5 plus 1. 3 into 6. 18 again divisible by 3. So any number multiplied with 3 is divisible by 3. So in the second case it is obviously divisible by 3. Got it? And what about the next case that is 3q plus 5. Is it divisible by 3 or or not. 3q plus 5. We can put the value of q as 1. Right? 3q plus 5.
putting value of q as 1, 3 into 1 plus 5. What is the value? 3 plus 5. It is 8 not divisible by 3. Then q as 2, 3 into 2 plus 5. 6 plus 5, 11, not divisible by 3. Again q as 0, 3 into 0 plus 5. 0 plus 5, 5, not divisible by 3. Now we can put 3 into 3, q was 3, 3 into 3 plus 5, 9 plus 5, 14, again not divisible by 3. So any number, if we put any number to q, this equation that is 3q plus 5 will not be divisible by 3. So here we can write not divisible by 3. Understood the two cases that is r is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1. In case of r is equal to 0, the first equation is divisible by 3. The other two are not divisible by 3. If r is equal to 1 case, the second one is divisible by 3. The other two equations are not divisible by 3. Now we can put r as 2 because r can take 3 values 0, 1 and 2. We took r is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1. Next we can take r as 2. Okay, and see what will happen. Third case, right? If r is equal to 2, right? What will be the value of n? n plus 2 and n plus 4, right? We can check it. See equation 1. What is equation 1? n is equal to 3q plus r. If r is equal to 2, equation 1 becomes n is equal to 3q plus 2 because r is 2. So n is equal to 3q plus 2. Why we have taken r as 2? See, if we are putting the value of r as 2, the equation 1 becomes n is equal to 3q plus 2. Understood? Now we can check it. What will be the value of n plus 2? This is the value of n. Now what about n plus 2? 3q. n is 3q plus 2. So here LHS we are adding plus 2. So RHS also it will become plus 2 which is equal to 3q plus 4. Now what about n plus 4? LHS we are writing as plus 4, right? Adding plus 4. Adding 4 to LHS. Similarly, the right hand side becomes n is 3q plus 2. So, plus 4 which is equal to 3q plus 6. And here we can take 3 as common because 6 is a multiple of 3, right? So, q plus 2. Understood? And here the first case n is equal to 3q plus 2. Is it divisible by 3 or not? We can check it. If q is 0, 3 into 0, 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. Not divisible by 3. Again, q was 1. 3 into 1 plus 2. 3 plus 2 it is 5. Not divisible by 3. Taking q as 2. 3 into 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 plus 2. 8. Not divisible by 3. We can take q as 10. 3 into 10 it is 30. 30 plus 2 32. Again not divisible by 3. So if we take any value for q and applying to this equation 3q plus 2 we will find that it is not divisible by 3. So in this case first case it is not divisible by 3. Got it? Now what about the second case? That is n plus 2 is equal to 3q plus 4. What about this one? We can check it. Putting q as 0. 3 into 0 plus 4. 4 which is not divisible by 3. Putting q as 1. 3 into 1 plus 4. 3 plus 4 7 not divisible by 3. Again q as 2. 3 into 2 plus 4. 6 plus 4 10 not divisible by 3. We can take q as 9. 3 into 9, 27 plus 4, 31, not divisible by 3. So if we take any value of q and applying to this equation 3q plus 4, we will find that it is not at all divisible by 3. So second case also, it is not divisible by 3. Got it? Now what about the third one? That is n plus 4 is equal to? 3 times q plus 2, that means any, this is a number, right? Any natural number, right? So, any real number, any natural number or any number, or any real number multiplied with 3, it is obviously divisible by 3. We can check it. Putting q as 0, 0 plus 2, 2. 3 into 2, 6, multiple, it is a divisible by 3. Then 3 into q as 1, 1 plus 2. 3 into 3, it is 9, divisible by 3. Then again, q as putting q as 3. So 3 plus 2 it is 5. 3 into 5 it is 15 divisible by 3. So if you put any value to q, for example q as 10, 10 plus 2 becomes 12. 3 into 12, 36 
divisible by 3. So, if we take any value for q and applying to this equation 3 times q plus 2, it is divisible by 3. See, in this, from this equation itself, we can say that it is divisible by 3 because any number multiplied by 3 is obviously divisible by 3. So, here it is divisible by 3. So, what you understood from these three values of R? See, if R is equal to 0, in one case, it is the first case itself, it is divisible by 3 and the other two cases, it is not divisible by 3. And what about if R is equal to 1? The second case is possible. It is divisible by 3, but the first and third case equations are not at all divisible by 3. And what about the third case if R is equal to 2? The last equation, it is possible. It is divisible by 3, but the first two equations are not possible because they are not divisible by 3. That means... 1 and only 1 out of n, n plus 2 or n plus 4 is divisible by 3 where n is any positive integer. So, how we can write the last step? Therefore, 1 and only 1 out of n, n plus 2 or n plus 4 is divisible by 3 where n is any positive integer where n is any positive integer hence proved got it this is the answer see the question is 1 and only 1 out of n n plus 2 or n plus 4 is divisible by 3 yes in the first case these out of these three cases only one is possible only one is divisible by three and in the second case also out of these three cases only one case is possible that is n plus two here n is possible n is divisible by three here in this case n plus two is divisible by three and if r is equal to two case the third one that is n plus four is divisible by three so we proved one actually one out of n n plus two or n plus four is divisible by three where n is any positive integer now, we can look into the second homework question. This was the second homework question, friends. Here, I hope you got the answer. Anyway, writing this for those who didn't get the solution. Okay. So, here the question is to find the maximum number of columns in which they means the army contingent, right? Yes members in this army group, right? The maximum number of columns in which they can march is equal to how we will find HCF of 616 and 32, right? Now, to compute HCF, we are using which method? By using Euclid's division algorithm, right? By using Euclid's division algorithm, how we find the HCF of these two numbers? 616 taking the largest number as A. BQ plus R. B as 32. Into what is quotient and what is reminder? We have to find out. Okay. See 32 into 10. This is a larger number right? So 32 into 10 it is 320 only. And what about 32 into 20? Which is equal to? 640 and 640 is greater than this one. That means a number which is between 10 and 20 is the answer of Q. That we have to find out. Now take the middle one between 10 and 20. What is the middle number? 50. So we have to find out what is the answer of 32 into 50. What is 5 to 10? 16, 1, 2, 1, 3, 0, 8, 4, 80. So 480 is smaller than 16. So we can try the next number 32 into 16. 12. Reminder 1, 19, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 11, reminder 1, 5, 5, 12, right? Now, it is again less than 616. Now, we can find the next one closest to 616, okay? 32 into 17. What is the answer? 14, 1, 22, 1, 2, 1, 3, right? 4, 4, 5, 5, 44, which is again less than 616. Now, again, try another num number, 32 into 18, 16. 25, 1, 2, 1, 3, 6, 7, 5. Again, less than 616. We can find whether any number is closest to 616. 
So 32 into 19. We know that 32 into 20 into 6 quarter, which is not possible. 32 into 19, 1, 28, 1, 2, 1, 3, 8, 6, not 8, right? Yes. So we got a number which is closest as well as less than 616 that is 32 into 19. 32 into 19 the answer is 608. So 616 minus 608 what is the answer? 8. Right? So 616 can be written as 32 into 19 plus 8. Is the reminder 0? No. The reminder is 8. So we have to proceed to the next step taking B as the dividend and you know the this one dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder you know this equation right actually Euclid's division algorithm is of this form that is dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder now we are taking 32 as the dividend and 8 as the divisor so 32 is equal to 8 into 4 it is 32 plus 0. That means here the reminder reached 0. So what is the HSF? HSF is the divisor at this stage that is 8. Got it? So we can say that therefore the same step the maximum number of columns in which they can march is equal to HSF of 1632 that is equal to 8. So the maximum number of columns in which they can march is 8. Friends, before going to the topic fundamental theorem of arithmetic, you must know these terms, these four terms that is prime number, composite number, prime factor and co-prime. So what is a prime number? We already know that is a number having only two factors, right? Which are the factors 1 and itself. Example, simple example it is 2, right? 2 is a prime number. What are its factors? 1 and 2. And what about 5? Five? 5 it is a prime number. What are the factors 1 and 5? So 2 and 5 are prime numbers because they are having only 2 factors. That is 1 and itself. Because 2 is having the factors 1 and itself. Itself means 2 itself. 5. 1 and 5 itself. What about 29? It is a prime number. What are the factors of 29? 1 and 29. 1 and if a number is having the factors 1 and itself, then it is called a prime number. These are the examples. And what about composite number? A number is having more than two factors. For example, 15. Why 15 is called a composite number? Because 15 can be written as 1 into 3 into 5. Right? So it is having more than two factors. So it is not a prime number. What about 18? 18 can be written as 1 into 2 into 9. Right? Or we can write 1 into 3 into 6. That means it is having more than 2 factors. So if a number is having only 2 factors, namely 1 and itself, it is called a prime number. If a number is having more than 2 factors, it is called a composite number. And what about prime factor? A factor that is a prime number is called a prime factor. For example, 15. Right? 15 we can return as 3 into 5. Right? That means 3 is a prime number. 5 is also a prime number. And which gives 15. Which is an example of a prime factor. Then another example. 70. Not 17. 21. Because 21 can be written as 3 into 7. And those 3 and 7 are prime numbers. So these are the examples of prime factor. A factor that is a prime number is called a prime factor. And what about co-prime? Two numbers or two integers A and B are said to be co-prime. If the only positive integer that divides both of them, that divides both A and B is 1, right? For example, 2 and 3. For 2, it is 1 and 2. Other factors. What about 3? 1 and 3. That means the only positive integer that divides both of them, it is 1. So, any two successive integers or numbers are co-primes. For example, 3 and 4. For 3 it is 1 and 3 and for 4 it is 1 and 4. The common digit that is 1 only, right? So, the two integers are said to be co-prime if all the only positive integer that divides both of them is 1, right? Understood? The difference between prime number, composite number, prime factor and a co-prime. 3 can be written as 1 and 3. 4 can be written as 1 and 4 or 1 into 2 into 2. Then, then also the common factor in both the cases is 1. 
got it the difference prime number composite number prime factor and co-prime these four terms are useful in the topic fundamental theorem of arithmetic okay now friends any natural number we studied in class 9 that any natural number can be written as a product of primes for example 2 2 can be written as 2 into 1 that is equal to 2 right as a product of prime then ah, before that uh, I forgot to tell you that is 1 a prime number or a composite number 1 is a prime number or composite number is it a prime number See, prime number means a number is having two factors, one and itself. And here, the factors of one is only one. There are no two factors, only one factor is there. That means one is not a prime number. And what about is one a composite number? No. Why? Because a composite number means a number is having more than two factors. But for one, it is having only one factor. So, it is also not composite. So, how we can write? 1 is neither prime nor composite. It is important. 1 is neither prime nor composite. That means 1 is not a prime number as well as it is not a composite number. Okay. This is important. Now, what I said, every natural number, every natural number, can be written as a product of primes. Right? We studied in a lower classes. Right? Every or any natural number can be written as a product of its primes. Right? Friends, I told you any natural number can be written as a product of its prime factors. Not primes. Not prime factors. A factor which is a prime number is called a prime factor. Right? So, for example, any natural number say 4. 2 into 2. It can be written as a product of its prime factors. 2 and 2 are prime numbers, right? And what about 253, which is equal to 23 into 11, right? What is the answer of 23 into 11? Yes, 253. And this 23 and 11, both are prime numbers, right? So, any natural number, for another example, it is... 66. We can return it as 11 into 2 into 3. Here 3, 2, 11 are prime numbers, right? So, any natural number can be written as a product of its prime factors that we studied in our lower classes, right? And now we can consider a factor tree. This factor tree, 3, 2, 7, 6, 0. We know what a factor tree is. That means just factorizing this number. When 3, 2, 7, 6, 0 is divided by 2, what is the answer? 6. This one 16380. Again, 16380 is divided by 2. What is the answer? 8190. Right? And now 8190, when it is divided by 2, what is the answer? 4095. Right? Now this is divisible by 3, right? 4095. Because 4 plus 0 plus 9 plus 5, it is 18. And that 18 is a multiple of 3. So, it is divisible by 3. So, when 4095 is divided by 3, what is the answer? 1, 3, 3, this one, right? Again, 1365 is divisible by 3. Why? 3 plus 1, 4 plus 6, 10 plus 5, 15. 15 is a multiple of 3. So, again, 1365, when it is divided by 3, what is the answer? 4, 5, 5, right? Now, is it divisible by 3? No. Why? Because 5 plus 5, 10 plus 4, it is 14. 14 is not a multiple of 3. But it is divisible by 5 because then our digit ends with 5, right? So, when 455 is divided by 5, what is the answer? It is 91. And this 91 is divisible by 7, right? By 13. Because 13 into 7 it is 91. Okay. So, how we got the answer? 3 to 7, 0 can be written as 2 into 2 into how many times 2? 1, 2, 3. 3 times 2. 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 times 3. 3 into 3 into 5 into 7 into 13, right? That means this is a composite number 3, 2, 7, 6, 0 because it is having more than two factors, right? 
So this composite number can be written as a product of primes because 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7 is a prime number and 13 is also a prime number. That means a composite number can also be written as a product of primes. It can also be written as a product of powers of primes. That means this 2 into 2 into 2 can be written as 2 raised to 3. Similarly, 3 into 3 can be written as 3 square. Then only 1, 5, only 1, 7 and only 1, 13. That means raised to 1, raised to 1, raised to 1. Okay. That means here I said that any natural number can be written as a product of its prime factors that we studied in our lower classes. And here we have proven that a composite number can also be written as a product of its prime factors. That means it can also be written as a product of powers of primes. It can make composite number can be written as a product of primes. Also can be written as a product of powers of primes. And this is called fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So we are entering into the theorem that is fundamental theorem of arithmetic. This is theorem 1.2 in our textbook page number 8. The theorem you write, the theorem as it is given in our textbook. Okay. So what the theorem says, every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. That means given any composite number, it can be expressed as a product of prime numbers in a unique way except for the order in which the prime numbers occur. For example, 2 into 5 into 7 into 3. It can be written as 2 into 3 into 5 into 7 or 7 into 2 into 3, 5 into 3 or 3 into 7 into 2 into 5 like that. Except for the order in which they are written, every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. Understood? So this theorem is simple. Every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes. And this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. And we usually write it in the ascending order form, right? For example, in the earlier examples, 3, 2, 7, 6, 0, right? It is written as 2 into 2 into 2, then 3 into 3 into 1, 5, 1, 7 and 1, 13, right? So, which can be written as, here we are written it in ascending order. That's why we are saying in a unique way. So, any order we can written, but usually we are written in, uh, writing in ascending order. So, here it can be written as 2 cube into 3 square into 5 into 7 into 13, okay? So, what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic? Every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. So once again what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic? Every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of prime in a unique way except for the order in which the prime factors occur, right? So every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. So that is called fundamental theorem of arithmetic. This can also be stated in the following form, another form that is the prime factorization of a natural number is unique except for the order of its factors. Or generally we can say that in general, suppose given this is the general form. Given a composite number x. Okay. In general we can say that. Given a composite number x. And we factorize this x as. We factorize it. It means x. We factorize it as, it as x is equal to p1, p2 etc. up to pn. Right. Where p1 p2 etc up to pn are primes okay and writing it in ascending order writing this in ascending order what we will get see generally we are simplifying this fundamental theorem of arithmetic that is given a composite number x we factorize it as x is equal to p1, p2, etc. up to pn, where p1, p2, etc. pn are prime numbers, right? And we are arranging this in ascending order. That is, 
P1 less than or equal to P2 less than or equal to etc. up to less than or equal to Pn, right? And when we combine these, we will get powers of primes. The earlier example we have written 3, 2, 7, 6, 0. When we combine the prime numbers, what we will get? 2 cube into 3 square, right? Into 5 into 7 into 30. This is our earlier example. Okay, so the theorem says that every composite number. So when they ask in the exam, state the fundamental theorem of hypermatic, you write this, then natural form, then give in general form, okay? So, every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. Or, in other words, we can say that the prime factorization of a natural number is unique except for the order of its factors. Or in general, generally we can write it as given a composite number x, we can factorize it as x is equal to p1, p2, etc. up to pn, where p1, p2, etc. up to pn are primes. And writing this in ascending order, we will get P1 less than or equal to P2 less than or equal to etc. up to less than or equal to Pn. And when we combine this, we will get powers of primes. And uh, you can write the earlier example 3, 2, 7, 6, 0. First you factorize that 2, 6, right? 1, 6, 3, 8, 0 again. 8, 1, 9, 0 again with the 2. Then with the 3. Again with the 3, right? Then with the 5, then with the 7, 13, right? So when we factorize this, we will get primes, product of primes. And when we arrange this, we will get powers of primes. That is 2 cube into 3 square into 5 into 7 into 13. So that's about fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now we can get into the questions. Friends, before going to the question, let me tell you one thing. That prime factorization, that is finding LCM and HCF of two positive integers using this theorem, using fundamental theorem of arithmetic is called the prime factorization. Okay, finding LCM and HCF, we are, we know how to find the LCM and HCF of two positive integers and we are finding that using fundamental theorem of arithmetic is called the prime factorization. Okay, now we can go to the question. The question is, Consider the numbers 4 raised to n, where n is a natural number. Check whether there is any value of n for which 4 raised to n ends with a digit 0. Is there any value of n? We can check it out. Okay. See. If the number 4 raised to n, once I explain it, then I will write. Okay. If the number 4 raised to n, They have to end with the digit 0, right? If the number 4 raised to n ends with, where to end with the digit 0 for any natural number n, then it should be divisible by 5, right? A number is divisible by 5 when it ends with either 0 or 5, right? That means if 4 raised to n is to end with the digit 0, then it should be divisible by 5. That means 5 should be a prime, num prime factor of 4 raised to n. But that is not possible by 4 raised to n can be written as 2 raised to 2n. That means the only prime factor of 4 raised to n is 2. It does not contain the prime factor 5. So we can't say that there is any value of n for which 4 raised to n ends with the digit 0. Understood? Once again, I will write and explain. Okay. If the number or numbers 4 raised to n were 2, end with the digit 0. If it should end with the digit 0, then it should be divisible by 5, right? Then it should be divisible by 5. But this is not possible. Why? But this is not possible. Why? Because 4 raised to n can be written as 2 raised to 2n. That means implies it contains only 2 as the 
prime factor right it does not contain the prime 5 it does not contain the prime number 5 right the prime 5 so the uniqueness so the uniqueness this is the scoring section you have to write the statement the uniqueness of the so the uniqueness of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic guarantees that so the uniqueness of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic guarantees that there is no numbers or we can say that there is no yeah value for n there is no value of n for which 4 raised to n ends with the digit 0 the question yeah check whether is there any value for n no so if the numbers 4 raised to n for n is n is any natural number where n is any natural number right so the question was to check whether the number 4 raised to n for any natural number n there is any value of n for which 4 raised to n ends with the digit 0 for the number 4 raised to n ends with the digit 0 it should be divisible by 5 but 4 raised to n does not contain the number 5 as prime it contains only the prime number as 2 because 4 raised to n can be written in only one way that is 2 raised to 2 n. It does not contain the prime 5. It contains only the prime 2. So the uniqueness, uniqueness of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic guarantees that there is no value of n for which 4 raised to n ends with the digit 0. Understood? Once again, if the numbers 4 raised to n for any natural number n were to end with the digit 0, then it should be divisible by 5. But this is not possible because 4 raised to n can be written as 2 raised to 2n only. That means it contains only 2 as the prime factor. It does not contain the prime 5. So the uniqueness of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic guarantees that there is no value of n for which 4 raised to n ends with the digit 0. Understood? Now friends, write these into your notebook. Because these three formulas are very important. First two, they are not formulas. They are the definitions of LCM of two positive integers. And this is the formula to find LCM and HCF. That means LCM of two positive integers into HCF of those two positive integers is same as product of that two numbers. Okay. So LCM of two positive integers means product of the greatest power of each prime factor. Of each prime factor involved in the numbers but hcf of two positive integers a and b is the product of the smallest power of each common factor of each common prime factor in the numbers look the difference here it is the greatest power and here it is the smallest power understood lcm we are looking for the greatest power of each prime factor involved in the numbers but in case of Finding HCF of two positive integers, it is the product of the smallest power of each common prime factor of each common prime factor in the numbers. Okay, and LCM of A, A B into HCF of A B is, is same as A into B. We will do it with an example. Find the LCM and HCF of six and twenty by the prime factorization method. So, as per the definition, how we can find out the LCM of uh, first of all, we have to find the factors of 6 and 20, right? 6 can be written as 2 into 3. That means 2 raised to 1 into 3 raised to 1, right? And 20 can be written as how? When we factorize 20, we will get like this. That means 2 into 2 into 5, right? Which can be written as 2 square into 5, right? Which can be directly written as 2 square into 5. Simplify means 5 raised to 1. Okay? Now, how to find the LCM of 6 and 20? Here A is 6 and B is 20. How to find? The LCM can be found out by 
using the product of the greatest power of each prime factor involved in the numbers. That means all the prime numbers. Here first one is 2 and the greatest power it is 2 square. Right? For the number 2 or for the prime 2, the greatest power is 2. Right? So we can write 2 square. Then again into, in, we have to write all the numbers involved. But in case of HCF, we are not writing the numbers which are not common. Okay. Here it is 2 raised to 2. Then 1, 3 is there. 1, 5 is also there. Okay. So what is the answer? 4 into 3 into 3 into 5 it is 15. 4 into 15 it is 16. Okay. Now we can find the HCF of the same numbers that is 6 and 20. How to find HCF? Product of the smallest power of each common prime factor in the numbers. So, which is the common prime factor? It is 2. And write the smallest power. Smallest power it is 2 raised to 1. Is there any common factor other than 2? No. But in case of LCM, we have taken all the prime factors involved in the numbers. We have taken 3, we have taken 5. But in case of HCF, we are taking only the common prime factor and that too in the lowest power. Considering the lowest power. Okay. So, it's safe of 6 and 20 is 2 raised to 1 that is equal to 2. Okay. Now, we can check whether LCM of 620 into HCF of 6 and 20 is equal to 6 into 20. We know that A into B. A into B here it is 6 into 20 which is equal to 120. Right. And LCM of AB we know 60. LCM of AB we got the answer as 60. And HCF of AB we got the answer as 2. Right. And when we multiply these two, 60 into 2 is equal to 120. That means LHS is equal to RHS. That is LCM of AB into HCF of AB we got 120. Which is same as A into B. A into B here is 120. LHS is equal to RHS. Got it? So, did you got the difference between LCM and HCF? LCM is the product of the greatest power of each prime factor involved in the numbers. We are taking all the numbers involved. But in case of, sorry, but in case of HCF of two numbers, product of the smallest power of each common prime factor in the numbers. Okay. Now, LCM of AB into HCF of AB equal to A into B. And we have done with an example, finding LCM and HCF of 620 and verified that LCM of 620 into HCF of 620 is same as 6 into 20 that is 120. Okay. Now my question is whether this is possible. This equation. Equation 3 is possible for 3 three numbers. No. It is not possible. It is not correct. Okay. So in our textbook in the exam usually they ask for LCM and HCF of 2 positive integers. Okay. So consider this only and this is not applicable for 3 integers. That means LCM of ABC into HCF of ABC is not equal to A into B into C. Okay. This is not possible for 3 positive integers. This formula is only possible for 2 positive integers. And we have formula to find LCM and HCF of 3 positive integers. In case of 3 integers, 3 positive integers A, B and C, we have the formula that is LCM of A, B, C equal to product of that number, say A into B into C into HCF of A, B, C by HCF of A, B into HCF of B, C into HCF of A, C. If you are finding LCM, write HCF. You have to find HCF of those numbers like this. Now, next HCF of ABC equal to ABC into LCM of ABC by LCM of AB into LCM of BC into LCM of AC. Just write it down. We don't know whether they will ask in the exam or not. This is not important. This formula is very, very important. But you just write down this also and study the formula. Okay. Now, we can do problems related to this LCM and HCF. The question is. Find the HCF of 96 and 404 by the prime factorization method. Hence, find the LCM. How to find the HCF of these two numbers? See, 96 its factors are, we can find it out, right? Using prime factorization method. 224, 212, 26, 23. 
that means 2 raised to 5 into 3 right 96 can be written as 2 raised to 5 into 3 and what about 4 not 4 in a similar way 4 not 4 2 2 0 2 2 1 0 1 1 not 1 2 into 2 into 1 not 1 that is 2 square into 1 not 1 4 not 4 can be written as 2 square into 1 not 1 now the question is find the HCF okay what is the HCF of 96 and 404? What is the HCF? We have to find the smallest power, right? Of each common factor in the numbers. What is the common factor 2? And its smallest degree is 2 square, right? So, 2 square which is equal to 4. So, we got the HCF of these two numbers as 4. Now, the question is, hence find their LCM. We know that HCF of 96404 into LCM of 96404 is equal to product of that numbers 46, 96 into 404, right? From here, we know the value of HCF4 into LCM of 96 and 404 is equal to 96 into 404. From here, we have to find the LCM. LCM of 96404 is equal to 96 into 404 divided by 4. So 101. 101 into 96. What is the answer? 101 into 96. 1606 909 6969. So the LCM is 9696. Got it understood? So the question was to find the HCF. If we know HCF and the product of those two numbers, then we can find the LCM by using the formula, this one. That is HCF into LCM is equal to product of that numbers. From there, we will get the LCM of 96 and 404. Here, it is 9696. Next question, find the HCF and LCM of 672 and 120 using the time factorization method. Here three numbers are there. So previous equation is not possible. It is possible for two numbers only, two integers only. So here six, what are the factors? Two and three. Two into three, right? Two raised to one into three raised to one. Then what about 72? What are its factors? Two, 36, 2, 18, 2, 9, 3, 3. That means 2 cube into 3 square, right? Understood. Then what about 120? What are its factors? 122, 60, 2, 30, 2, 15, then 3, 5. That means 2 square, 2 cube, 2 raised to 3 into 3 into 5. Got it? Now how to find the HCF of these three numbers? The smallest power among the common factors. Here the common factors are 2 and 3. 5 is not possible because 5 is not present in these two. We have to take the common factors and here the common factors in these three numbers is 2, 1, 3 and the smallest power among 2 is 2 raised to 1, right? So 2 raised to 1 into among 3, the smallest power is 1, 3 raised to 1, which is equal to 6. That means HCF of these two, these three numbers is 6 and what about LCM of 6, 72 and 120, these three numbers taking the Take all the numbers and also take the greatest power of those numbers. In case of 2, the greatest power is 3. So 2 cube into, in case of 3, the greatest power is 2. So 2 cube into 3 square into 5. The greatest power is 5 itself, 5 raised to 1. So what is the LCM? 8 into 9 into 5, right? So it is 360, right? So we got the HCF of these three numbers of 6 and the LCM of these three numbers of 360. So there is homework for you which is in the textbook itself that is exercise 1.2 page number 11 the questions 1 to 7 that is the full questions in that exercise that is 1 to 7. This is homework for you we will explain or we will discuss it in the next video. So that's all for today's class hope you understood what all I taught to you in this class. Hope you enjoyed the class and uh, if you find the channel informative for you, please support the channel by subscribing and sharing it with your maximum friends who are preparing for class time. Your each subscription is an encouragement for me to upload more videos. See you in the next class with the solutions of these homework questions. Till then, have a good day and thank you.